Mildred Hayes, Frances McDormand, is angry. It's been months since her teenage daughter Angie was raped, murdered, and set on fire as she walked home late one night on the outskirts of Ebbing, Missouri. And the police seem to have made no progress whatsoever in finding the killer. She blames Police Chief William Willoughby, Woody Harrelson, for spending more time torturing black folks than investigating her daughter's death. And to make her point, she rents three unused billboards located on a minor road on the edge of town to advertise her cause, with signs that read, Still no arrests? How come Chief Willoughby? And Raped While Dying. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, the third film directed by playwright Martin McDonough after In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths, is a very considerable achievement. It boasts one of the most intricately skillful screenplays used as the basis for an American film in quite some time, a script that shifts in a nanosecond from the bleakly funny to the deeply confronting, from the raw to the sublime. McDonough wrote the role of Mildred with Frances McDormand in mind, and it's the best thing she's done since Fargo. Her billboard provocations throw the small town into turmoil. Willoughby, who appears to be a genuinely decent family man, with a wife, Abby Cornish, and two little girls, tries to assure Mildred that he is working on her daughter's case, but the lady's not for turning. Then he tells her he has terminal cancer, but that doesn't affect her either, except to remark that the billboards won't be as effective after he's dead. His flaky deputy, Dixon, played by the magnificent Sam Rockwell, channels his anger towards Red Welby, Caleb Landry Jones, the hapless character who rented the space to Mildred in the first place, and by and large the locals side with Willoughby. Mildred's son Robbie, Lucas Hedges, who was so good in Manchester by the Sea, is conflicted. And the local priest drops by to urge Mildred to give up on her campaign, only to be bitterly accused by association of complicity with pedophile priests, a scene that palpably chilled the audience at the film's Venice premiere before a burst of spontaneous applause. Also outraged by Mildred's crusade is her ex-husband Charlie, John Hawkes, who, in one hilarious scene, happens to be at the same restaurant where Mildred is having an awkward date with James, Peter Dinklage. There is, as you can see, a great deal going on in the film. At the start, it feels like the basis for a straightforward thriller. Who killed Angie, and will her mother succeed in tracking down the killer, with or without the help of the authorities? But it's much, much more than that. The film's savage humour, embodied in McDormand's remarkable portrayal of a woman who's reached the point where she's hardly rational anymore, is suffused with elements of what can only be described as poetry, embodied in the scene in which Mildred, while checking out the billboards, is joined by a deer that emerges from the forest. Notable, too, is Sam Rockwell's gormless, mother-fixated Dixon. In fact, just about every actor in the film is at the top of their game, inspired, no doubt, by McDonough's superb screenplay, which won a prize in Venice, and by the originality, at times the sheer brilliance, of the entire concept. I'm giving Three Billboards four and a half stars. Mm-hmm.